uh, compulsive disorder. Uh, so before we do that, like let's introduce ourselves. Uh, my, uh, with myself, my name is Akshay. Uh, I am actually a software engineer, but I do have an interest in mental health. Sorry, because that's why I'm doing this. Uh, Ilakya? Akshay, I'm Ilakya. I am a third year undergraduate student studying genetics, and I'm also pursuing a minor in psychology. I'm very interested in mental health as well, and looking forward to the conversation. Shitish? Hi, everyone. I'm Shitish, and I am a I am a 10th grade student and a creator. Vyas? Uh, I'm Vyas. Uh, I completed my undergraduate degree in biomedical engineering, and I'm currently working at a medical device company. Awesome, awesome. Okay, uh, so let's uh, head into the topic. So OCD, right? Uh, do you guys know what OCD is? Because uh, a lot of people say, hey, to, uh, that's OCD, uh, and you know, like, uh, she, she has OCD, he has OCD. We say those things a lot, but like, uh, like so first you have to define the terms. Uh, so, uh, do you guys know what OCD is? Do you guys want to uh, give it a try? Okay. Uh, OCD stands for obsessive compulsive disorder. It's a, it's a mental health problem or illness when you basically have these uh, obsessions or compulsions to do certain behaviors or certain things. Um, they're not just like to, to, to come and stereotype thing is, oh, I'm so clean. I'm so particular about where things go. I like things in alphabetical order, things like that. But that's kind of a misrepresentation. Um, I, I imagine that is something more along the lines of, uh, you know, you have to knock on a door a certain number of times, otherwise you can't really open it. Or you need to do certain things before you're able to have a shower, otherwise you don't feel um, comfortable having a shower. Like there's certain compulsions that their behaviors that you must do in order to um, kind of function or do what we consider normal. Yeah, um, that is like a, like a pretty good answer. Uh, does anyone else want to try? Okay, cool. Uh, I'll just like uh, go on and say like what I found on Google. So, <clears throat> so OCD is like, uh, you know, it's like starts off with like excessive thoughts, uh, which are like also like obsessions that lead to repetitive behavior, uh, you know, like which are like the compulsions. And uh, usually they characterized by like uh, unreasonable thoughts and fears. So that leads to these, these behaviors. There are actually four types of uh, OCD, OCDs. So um, for that one, like I'm gonna say what it is. You just have to like tell me like whether how well you know it uh, or like this is very new to you. Uh, and you know, just like your thoughts on this. So um, the first one is uh, the contamination, which is like sort of what like I think you know, a lot of people would think OCD is. So it's like uh, it's like more of you know like I don't uh, like a germaphobe sort of thing where like uh, I don't want germs to be like you know like part of this something like that, and uh, people like go to like a uh, huge lens to uh, make sure that like there's no germs. And for that, they sometimes like wash their hands like, you know, every five minutes or uh, like excessive cleaning. Or uh, if you think, if they think you know, like, uh, like an object is uh, like, you know, like infected, then they would just like throw it away. And uh, one example of that is like uh, in, in Big Bang Theory, like uh, I think Sheldon has uh, OCD and this form of OCD. Because, uh, for example, he doesn't like anybody touching his food. He's uh, like a germaphobe. And um, so, yeah, uh, so this, it, like, uh, especially it, since we're talking about uh, contamination OCD, you know, like uh, there are also, you know, like with COVID 19, you know, like uh, they have, uh, they probably are affected a lot by this as well. So, what are your thoughts on contamination OCD? I had a question. So are like phobias and OCDs actually go hand in hand at times? At times. Uh, so uh, uh, both are anxiety disorders. So OCD is an anxiety disorder and like uh, mo uh, like most phobias are anxiety disorders as well. So um, it's like it doesn't ha have to happen. So yeah, it's not like a causation where uh, 
if you have uh, like this ocd then you would also have uh, this phobia but you know like uh, if there is a phobia that phobia could affect you in uh, like the ocd as well interesting got it okay so do you have any thoughts on uh, the contamination of ocd this i think it might be a bigger problem coming post this pandemic as people might fear the fact that they have to go to public places where there is a high chance of having infections so that might be a bigger issue that's true that's true uh elaka i'm thinking about uh something you said where it's like your contamination from an object you're trying to avoid it so it doesn't necessarily have to be germaphobe i'm thinking is there certain things and certain ideas that you have to avoid and you don't want to be contaminated by them that's very interesting i never thought about it that way well not sure about the ideas thing but i think it might go for like certain objects like you have to avoid touching it or interacting with certain objects i think it might go that way but even with the idea say it could be like a cognitive uh, uh like you know like avoidance and i don't you know like what the uh, the research is on that but uh, it, it if it is it will be interesting uh, okay let's i will say like what uh, what all like uh, rituals are like the the common ones in this and then uh, after that I'll go to the next one which is like disinfecting and sterilizing excessive cleaning excessive hand washing throwing away object believed to be contaminated or sources of contamination frequent uh, clo- uh, clothing changes and then creating safe and clean zones and uh, in a way that's also uh, another reason why I brought up Sheldon because he has his own spot he doesn't want anybody else to sit where he sits and uh, those are things that you know like looking at it from like a medical standpoint makes a lot of sense and like uh, gives you a different perspective on it uh anybody yeah. has any closing thoughts before i go to the next one yeah i mean uh, i'd like to add something about what uh, shrit has mentioned about uh, you know people being a bit more uh, uh, conscious of their surroundings and what they touch and uh, the technical term for something that for something that spreads through the surface is called fomites so anything that so spreads through clothes furniture everyday objects door knobs that's called fomites and when it comes to covid-19 it doesn't survive much on paper cardboard things like that so maybe only about a day or two is uh, is the time period uh, after which it's safe to touch those surfaces so this is from you know the national health authorities and the guidelines from uh, you know health departments so yeah that's that's my you know take on this yeah uh in is in general we should avoid this problem like 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 um in the in the case of this pan, like post the pandemic my like and things will start to open do you think is there any way to avoid this like to avoid the problem in a way which is not unhealthy like a coping mechanism i put the question like uh, on the floor like uh, what do you guys think could you repeat the question shitaj So it's like what can we do to avoid the problem of people yeah. like, like trying to be clean the problem might, might exist might like elevate in the upcoming 5 year like one or two years because everyone will be fearing that they might get infected again or might face a new infection or something like that so like is there any possible way to come over this which is not unhealthy so basically coping mechanisms after like the pandemic is dying yeah, down exactly uh well here I'll give you a fact to it Uh, this comes from the fact that I took a COVID-19 pandemic related course last semester. So we spoke a lot about the virus and different um, societal effects. And um, at least in the United States, one out of every three flu viruses, that's like the flus that cause a lot of flus around like winter season, basically. One out of three of them are coronaviruses. This virus will still exist. It'll just die down into a much less... Um, harmful strain of itself right it'll just like blend in with the types of viruses that it's already like it's part of the it's part of a family of viruses that's already been affecting us that's why its symptoms are flu like we're used to it it is like the flu virus um and it's not such a bad thing if people want to continue wearing masks i would say that uh it's a good example that if people are sick they can now actually aim to wear a mask and it's not just inevitable that someone will spread a common sickness 
Um, that's a good thing. In countries that were affected by the previous pandemic, SARS and MERS, they were the ones to react better to this pandemic because they were already used to wearing masks and following better hygiene practices. Uh, so it won't be such a bad thing that people are more cautious and aware of health um, things. And I know that a lot of people are already tired of wearing masks and following like excessive measures. So as soon as like officially we get news that it's gonna die down, I think people, most people will be able to recover back to what they consider normal activities. And the health things that they're following now are still good things to be following in the future. So it won't be a terrible thing if they continue that long answer. Um, that does not exactly answer my question. I was asking like, what about those group of people who will be fearing to go out because of the, the fact that they might get infected again? Although most people know that it's a, it's a part of like it's similar to common cold, not exactly common cold, but like how does one cope with it? Like there might be a certain group of people who might fear going out or, or anything like that. So that was what I was trying to ask. Like, so how can we make them overcome this problem? Yes. Uh, what's your answer? Yeah. I mean, so, so the, the point that Elakia conveyed is kind of what happens next, which is also important in terms of discussing what, uh, you know, what the future might look like. And to answer Shruti's question, there's something called exposure therapy when it comes to, you know, handling uncomfortable situations that uh, people with OCD face. So exposure therapy is kind of like real action, right? So where, where uh, uh, let's say someone uh, who's uh, kind of, uh, who's kind of hesitant to touch something to, you know, maybe handle uh, cash, right? Because cash is, is one uh, object that goes around a lot. And uh, if, they, if they don't like handling it, so what, what the, they might, they could try is exposure therapy where they think of, you know, handling it. And it, it is uncomfortable because it's outside their comfort zone. And they expose themselves to that act by, uh, you know, by handling cash and seeing how they feel and react. So that could be something that people so could try. So basically doing what they fear. Exactly. Yeah, that's what exposure therapy is. So, and that's what the behavioral therapists actually do when, uh, when they try to come up with solutions. So it, it sounds like a simple thing. It sounds like an obvious thing to do, but there's a lot more uh, talking and, you know, talking and convincing that person to do, so, to, to do it that normal people might, might not be able to do, might not be qualified to help them. So that's why you go to therapists because they can help you with that exposure therapy process. So yeah, that's something people could try. Does that answer your question, Shatid? Yeah, but yeah. there's one thing in which you raised, like people uh -huh. can go to go to these therapists. So what about right. those people who might like want to do it at home or are uncomfortable yeah. with going to therapist because of a conservative background or something like that? So like yeah, is there anything which yeah. they can do at home or something like that? Yeah, I mean, definitely, yeah, because therapy is sometimes seen a luxury and there's a lot of stigma attached to it in certain societies. So, and you need money, right? And I don't know if insurance covers it in the US or in India, so probably not, my guess. So, and uh, uh, that's a great question. I honestly don't know. It's, it's something that family, friends, relatives of that person can help them with. Uh, you know, it's, it's support, it's mental support and humans, humans need that emotional bonding and support to do something that they fear. So that's something that we could provide as well. And we learn along the process. Let's say we talk to someone who we think should try exposure therapy. We could talk with them, we listen to them, and then we might make mistakes in that conversation and we should be okay with that. And then we learn, they learn and life goes on. So that's, that's what I think. So yeah, we could definitely try that with people around us. So I try to do that as well. So, yeah. <clears throat> uh, I have something to add as well. So uh, there is like, you know, like with therapy, it can also be like uh, cognitive behavioral uh, therapy, which is uh, like sort of used in like, you know, like these like, ways to like, uh, think and especially with OCD, it's like used as well. Uh, other than that, like as for, uh, you know, like not being able to go out there, like online, uh, like therapy sessions are available now. Uh, I would still say you want know, like, to uh, probably go to a physical place, which would be better. But uh, considering you know like uh, like right now, like we are in a pandemic situation, you know like uh, if we have to 
do it this way that's fine too it's it, depending on your needs right so like a person doesn't like going out they might be more comfortable like doing it this way and so with that in mind potentially they could do it this way as well and also i, I do want like um, make sure everybody got the point that you know like for the exposure therapy don't do it by yourself don't uh, like that's a treatment where uh, you have to do it properly like take the right steps and like uh, only a doctor would like a doctor as in like a therapist or someone would actually know like you know like uh, how much exposure you can give at each stage of your uh, therapy and if you try it by yourself it could actually have like uh, detrimental effects so uh, uh cliche uh, statement but like don't try this at home by yourself the next one is uh, perfection ocd also these names just came come from that website it's not like a like a medical term uh, so it's just like you know like over the term that they the article used uh, so like if you quote it to someone like saying hey can uh, yeah contamination ocd uh, they probably like, what are you talking about uh, anyway so uh, for the perfection ocd it's like you know like uh, things need to be arranged in a certain way or like the excessive need for like symmetry uh, or the fact that you know like if something is like not symmet- uh, like symmetrical they have to be like really like uh, like messy in a really disorganized to a stage where they feel like you know like this cannot be done right away this uh, symmetry can't be done right away or sometimes you know you have like uh, they have this thing where you know they have to touch your right hand left hand and then do something those kind of things where uh, they have these uh, like rituals uh, and you know they have a feeling of you know like they have to do certain things for it to feel right uh, it's not it's not like you know they don't go like you know even if they they do things as till the point that they feel right so it's not uh, about you know if you give them like a logical stance you know like it's it's the same thing you know like they uh, they need to feel right so you if you give them an argument by saying hey this is the same thing uh, that's just a moot argument uh, so uh, like this uh, this call like is in this article is using like the perfection ocd and um, you know it, it could even be like an extreme attachment to like uh, like certain objects or uh, you know sometimes hoarding for that matter and you know but, but the biggest things are like the rituals uh, that come with it right so uh, what are you guys thoughts on this one uh, perfection ocd elaka uh I would say this is the type that I'm most familiar with or heard of the most because I feel like this is the type that's stereotyped the most. Uh not that I understand the details of it or okay the the actual experience of it what you're explaining right now that is new to me but the concept of perfection OCD is similar to the way that OCD is stereotyped and misused in public now. Right that you're so but you're such a perfectionist and you're I'm OCD about the way things are. just bad i've been calling people out who say that i'm like do you actually have ocd no stop saying it uh yeah you bring up a good point that you can't argue with someone if you say you want to do it until it's logically like it feels right to them they've done it like the perfect number of times or enough times uh that's a good point to acknowledge and i guess just to be really supportive of the person until they get it to where they where it needs to be um but i can see how it might be really hard if it's hindering group progress in a way that someone wants to keep doing a certain step until it's uh done right and if the time it takes to achieve this is really long and it might be hard and more than tolerance you might need to encourage the person to try and see if there's therapies that will help them with their compulsions yeah um it is uh, like very important uh, like to know these things awareness like really does help uh yeah shitesh do you guys have any thoughts i think it's like a, it's a bit oh, exaggerated like people really think about small things they they like really exaggerate the fact that, that they have ocd while they just have a uh um how do you say i'm um, like a desire for making things closer to perfect so i think that people are really oh, misusing the term so i am agreeing with that I, i i'm not having any kind of question for this but you do bring a very good point so the dsm actually like uh, say the dsm 5 i think uh, so uh, like at least uh, like one hour of your uh, time in a day is spent towards this then it, w- it would probably be considered as like no cd 
and uh, it's a sort of thing where you know like uh, one hour is like basically nothing because because uh, you actually have the thoughts like uh, sort of like the whole day uh, it's hard to like uh, you know like uh, do you think like, it can be even something where you're like you're late for office you're late for school and then you suddenly you see something but you have to do it because before you go there and uh, sometimes you know you will have thoughts where you feel like you know like because of, uh, like this is like you know like holding you back but you're not able to do anything about it is how you feel uh, and uh, it's sort of like uh, like look at yourself man like like why is this happening to me sort of thing uh, so it is uh, it's a, it is a bit sad you know like uh, and so where like other people sort of like uh, say that they have ocd uh, like it's a price whereas you know like it comes with some effects as well like the compulsions that come uh, come with uh, and uh, some people like you do use the word like we like we like um do you guys have any closing thoughts on uh, ilaka i had a question um so how okay. to, how should a group which has a which has someone dealing with this problem deal with him because like in in some cases like how would a team deal with it like if some imagine like someone has having a group project where someone is working with you who has ocd so like how should people deal with him because in that case they would most likely be like he's wasting time or something so like how should the the overall group deal with that person so should like like understand this problem should they make him get out of the problem which is unlikely but how should a group like deal with it i, I would repeat it three times so <laughs> <laughs> that's fine uh, so my answer to that would be like you know like be understanding uh, you know like that uh, the person has ocd and then also just like ask the person cuz you know like, he he or she is probably informed as to like uh, like like what uh, like what ocd means to him or her and like you know like what comes with it and uh, so they they probably sort of like already know you know like uh, what the coping mechanisms are and uh, like like what are places where uh, like they have these thoughts and like things like that and uh, as far as you're fixing it you're like uh, it has to it it takes like months and years to like, fix these things and to some people like you know like it's just something that they have to live with uh, so so it could basically be where you're going to be like treated to like uh, to become okayish but you know it may never be like, treated like like properly like forever it's like it's all like who they are uh, sort of thing so uh, like with that you know like the biggest thing is you have to be understanding of like uh, their thing and um, and obviously uh, you know like i'm not obviously saying you know like uh, like like it's okay if they like you know don't do any work uh, that's not what i'm saying at all i'm just saying you know like uh, be understanding and like try to figure out a way to like uh, work with that person and that person will be able to like, give a lot of information to you which would be helpful in like dealing with the person that's my thoughts i don't uh, i don't know if this is like the actual way of doing it this is just, like my thoughts yeah yeah i think that's a fair explanation i like the point when you said it's kind of you uh, you sort of get to the point and uh, support them in a sense that they're able to handle it on their daily basis like it's not the first thing on their mind when they when they do a task so probably it's fourth or fifth on their priority list uh, you know um, so it it shouldn't bother them it should get to a point where it shouldn't bother them in their day to day activities so yeah that's that's I, that's the you know best way of looking at it and trying to uh, you know help them in any sort of way where we can and be accommodate yeah I also have an another question which is similar to what Shitesh's question is let's say the person doesn't know they have ocd or uh, maybe the person doesn't want to share to everyone else that uh, they have ocd uh, but you know like uh, you you see something and you, uh, i mean you're not entirely sure if it's ocd either but like uh, you you see it and maybe like you have the feeling that you're know, like maybe this person has ocd so if that is the case like what do you do i mean that case probably we should like um the best thing we can do is like what we have we have said that we should like make them like make them come into a state where it's not their priority and rather keep keep them either away from rem- making them remember that subconsciously or maybe just deal with it and just let it go as it is 
because telling someone that you should go to a therapist sounds a bit rude in a, in an office workspace or something I would add, you know, honestly, I was thinking about a similar thing uh, just now. And I guess in the end, the answer is always compassion, right? You just need to be kind to people and accept the differences in behavior and things that they want to do. Uh, give them the freedom to do so. Like, don't make them worry about it so much. Like, your kind and compassionate, empathetic, understanding nature would make it easy for someone to do what they need to. Because I was thinking about what if someone who shows up late, but their perfect trip to work involves getting coffee in the way, right? And so even if they're late, they show up with the coffee and then you might judge them even more for that. Like you showed up late, but you had time to get coffee. Um, I'm guessing here, I don't know if that's actually a ritual that people with perfectionist type OC, perfection OCD get, but I don't know, just, just, you just have to be very accepting of differences, you know? And not test them, not be like, oh, how how bad is your OCD? Can I can I force you to do these things and see how bad you react? Like that'd be terrible. Oh, experimenting with their OCD is like definitely not like the right thing. Uh, also, like I, I've actually like never thought about it that way. Uh, like with like getting coffee and like do sort of like like rituals that like you know like, like a morning ritual, like uh, like, uh, like night ritual, like that like everybody has. You know how that could be linked with the like um, any sort of like uh, like anxiety disorder, uh, like for this matter, OCD. Like I never thought about it that way. Interesting. Uh, the third one is like doubt and harm. So uh, it's a sort of thing where, uh, like you know, like uh, I don't know. Uh, I think this is like popular in India. I don't know about like other places where uh, the moment you go out out of the house, like five minutes later, you're like, oh shit, did I lock the door or not? Uh, and like things like you know, oh, I probably left the uh, like the gas jar the uh, like on, and like I, I forgot to switch it off. Yeah, you know, like those sort of harms. Uh, and uh, people with those like those sort of OCD, uh, they call like the doubt and harm, on, according to this article. So like what they do is I you think know, it's you... more about like it's about like if you, if you like a black cat crosses your way and stuff like that is more more related to that like. Like sometimes there's this very weird stereotype in India we have is Kali Bili Rasta Khatagi, which is black cat crosses your way on a day, then your day is bad or, or is going to have something which bad is going to happen to you. So that's one thing which is very common and that's one of that's sort of an OCD, but I will not call it one. I don't know. Like I would like to know your your opinion on this. I I do have, have heard that uh, stereotype. I've seen it in, uh, in movies where they it's been used for like comedy references, but I never thought about it like from an OCD standpoint, uh, where uh, like it comes in a way where like it, it wasn't just like they're going out of the house, like wasn't right. And you know, that's where uh, like, you know, and if, if that is the case, then you know, and it doesn't, it should matter if it's a black cat or any cat though, like uh, anything that disrupts that pattern should have a problem though. So I don't. I think it's a uh, link. Anyway, uh, we'll get more thoughts. Yes. Oh. So, yeah, that's a great point. And uh, humanity is kind of built on superstitions, right? So we, we came up from a time where there was no science and uh, we, we kind of made things along the way. If we didn't know something, we attached a cause and effect to something that didn't really have a cause and effect. So, you know, for, for the black hat effect, there could have been a situation where a person uh, where in a city, two people had uh, black cats cross uh, them in two different, uh, uh, two different, at two different times. And for the first person, they might have, uh, you know, uh, gotten a really bad illness about 2000 years ago and died of, you know, pancreatic cancer, but they, they didn't know anything about cancer. Right. And for the second person, their kid might have fallen down and gotten injured. And these two guys sit together and talk, right? And the thing spreads. So there's nothing related to the black cat, but it somehow spreads and gets that conspiracy theory sort of feel to it. And there's a lot of things like that. For instance, in my family, there's something where you shouldn't cut nails. Uh, you shouldn't go to get a haircut on a Thursday or something or a Friday, or you shouldn't cut nails at night. 
So these were things that made sense when people didn't have light bulbs in their house because cutting your nails at night means that it falls down on the ground, it could fall into your food, you could eat it and it could damage your internal organs, uh, your you know food pipe. But in a place where we have lights all around us, cutting nails doesn't seem like a bad idea. <laughs> if you have work the next day and you want to be sharp. So, you know, these are, these are things that, I don't know, fall under superstitions. People might be, I don't know. So it's, I think it falls under superstitions and it's a part of somehow it's embedded in the culture and has a religious connotation as well. Yeah. Uh, what, I, what I think about this is that, um, like, it might be a case that it might have happened with a few people, and then it became a common story to believe, and then like the story be, uh, spread it. So, like, so one part of one body which you said was that we didn't have science, so we wanted to attach something to relate with it. The nail part, I didn't get. Like, like if you said nails on Thursday, does not make a point. Nails being cut on no. in the night is a, is a point. Yeah, n- nails at night, no haircuts on Thursdays. So that's that's the rule in my household. Yeah. It's kind of like that. So there's a lot of things in every culture. So you, you go around, talk to people, and you're going to find a bunch of these in every country and region. Yeah, true. Okay. Um, let us continue like, saying the point of like uh, the doubt and harm OCD. So like, you know, like with the doubt and harm OCD, uh, some of the common behaviors you could see is you know, like checking and rechecking like, you know, whether you've locked the door, whether you have like switched off the stove, whether the window is off, whether the lights are off, things like that. And then, you know, like, uh, it could even be like checking like a number of times. It could be, you know, I have to check like five times to like feel uh, like, okay. And then, you know, like, uh, it could be, you know, like, uh, like once I done the app, like, you know, reach this, all their steps to make sure like uh, everything's fine. It could be a lot, like a lot of these things. Uh, so that is what, uh, like, doubt and harm or here he is. Does anybody have any thoughts? Or if not, we can go, go to the next one. Um, like I thought, like, oh, I yes. haven't thought on this. Yeah. Like, it, does this stem from trauma in, 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 in some cases? Like, like they might have had a past trauma, like, in some cases. I, like, someday might, they might have had an important exam and they, in, in, due to, like, rushing out, they might have left the keys at home. And they have been locked out, and they have to call some key, the key locksmith or something. So, is it like past trauma which stems into the future, or is it more about a family, like a story told from one generation to another in this case, or is it a mix of both? I don't know. Uh, I didn't like find uh, like any information on that, uh, but uh, I can probably look it up like after the meeting to see if like. Uh, that's anything on that article that could help with this. If not, I, I can read up on like OCD to like see if there's anything, but I really don't know. Okay. I just skimmed a little bit to see like when OCD develops and uh, how it might form. And it, it, it can form over a lifetime, right? So I think it could be related to trauma or a bad incident that now makes you anxious about it, right? Because anxiety can easily develop from uh, different experiences in your life and since this is an anxiety disorder if you're anxious about forgetting something before an exam or just forgetting things at home in general and you start doing things to reinforce that belief or that worry then it can develop into OCD so I think there is merit or some weight to what you're saying Shithir. Um I just looked up uh, the thing while you were answering and uh, uh, so actually so OCD yeah, like Traumatic events don't cause OCD, but uh, like environmental factors as well as genetic factors, like needs to be present for for this to happen. So like you know, it wouldn't come from like a singular traumatic event or uh, or you know like, even like uh, it, in a way like, you know, it, like that's probably the the more well known like what trauma is. It could be the fact that you know like. Uh, in the sense that you know, like uh, like a repetitive uh, thing that could like like become a traumatic uh, event could possibly be with it. So uh, trauma is linked with OCD. However, uh, it is like according to a 2011 study. Uh, I, don't, I haven't seen the sample size because obviously I just looked up for like a few seconds. Uh, but uh, it according to that, uh, it says. Um, 
the necessary environmental and genetic factors need to be present in order for a traumatic experience to trigger the onset of OCD. Okay, uh, Ilak, you had something in the chat. Oh, okay. Something in the chat. So yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah, I mean, I just posted a link, a kind of. Uh, prelim, uh, just the first thing that I found. So, thirty percent chance of people with, uh, you know, diagnosed with PTSD, uh, some form of trauma, developing OCD, uh, is about thirty percent. So, with within a one year time frame, I believe. So, yeah, there, there is definitely some relation, and uh, Shrithij's, uh, you know, question and observation holds merit when when put under the scanner. So, yeah, there is some research that backs that up. So yeah, there's there's probably a lot more. I just haven't checked, but yeah, that's that's the initial finding. I think we'd have to be mindful of the point where it needs to affect your life for like an hour a day, and then maybe then it's diagnosed with OCD. General concern about oh, have I forgotten something? Might just be you learned from your mistakes, but if it leads to behaviors and compulsive thoughts that are extensive, then yeah. Uh, but anyway, it's good that you know we got like both sides, uh, like research on both sides. So like you know, like uh, like if someone watches this, you know, like they sort of like you know do their own research on this because we yeah, like we got all this information like from like a few minutes of uh, like looking up on the internet. So it obviously helps that you know like with that uh, like this will probably make them curious. Hopefully, make them curious to like uh, read up more on this one. Uh, okay, anybody has any closing thoughts on doubt and harm OCD? Okay, I'll go to the next one. Uh, the final one is like forbidden thoughts. So uh, this could be like about like like a like a violent thing, a religious thing, sexual thing. Uh, like these are like just like thoughts that come uh, like into your head, and then you're like right after you get the thought, you start feel like oh man, like why do I get these? Why am I getting these thoughts? I'm not a bad person. Why I, like I don't want to do these things, and you sort of like go through this whole uh, thing, and then you like uh, after that. Um, you sort of like review each of your behavior like a lot, and then like sort of like to get a reassurance that you are like you are a good person. You do believe you are a good person, but then you are getting these thoughts, um, and then sometimes you know like uh, you sort of like just like develop like an escapist mentality where like that's one of the coping, uh, coping mechanism where you hope that you're not thinking at all by doing multiple uh, tasks at the same time and like or just like trying to not think about certain things. uh this is like not uh, like a it's not talked a lot uh when it comes to uh, this one is but you know, nobody says you know like i uh, somebody like attacked this person because he has ocd that's usually not how the news works so i was really really uh, surprised when i read this because i uh, i got to know the information just like a day ago so what are your thoughts on this one i didn't like get Like, how are we linking this to OCD? I'm like, I was a bit confused. Like, I, I mean, like, I didn't like get the point of this form of OCD, but it's not exactly linked to OCD. I, I don't know. I just didn't get the point on this one. Uh, it comes. So I'll read like exactly the words I have. So like, uh, uh, the following thoughts OCD here and say it says here some of the common themes and rituals associated with this. dimension include uh, persistent intrusive intrusive thoughts that are often sexual religious violent in nature um and you know persistent worry about uh, acting on intrusive thoughts or having them having them makes one a bad person uh, obsessions about like religious ideas that feel blasphemous or wrong blasphemy is you know like going like saying uh, uh, like something wrong about a uh, about religion uh And uh, don't do that uh, online because you know, like uh, in certain countries, you would get killed for blasphemy. Um, fun fact. Uh, and then uh, engaging in like mental rituals to dispel or cancel out the bothersome thoughts. Some of these thoughts might include neutralizing thoughts through mentally canceling out uh, negative thoughts with positive ones or excessive praying, excessive reviewing behavior, uh, uh, or the seeking of reassurance, and then avoidance of uh, situations perceived as thought triggers. So that's the information I have on uh, the society. I'm guessing the compulsion part of it, like, uh, is like more cognitive on this one than like, uh, like physically doing it. Uh, but uh, there, I mean, you, you can't take it away just because you know, like, uh, like you from the outside don't see it, and you're like, 
we are fighting for like mental health and physical health are, are like both important so we shouldn't yeah, I, like yeah. yeah i believe like i like how do we find out if it's ocd or is just a random thought like how do we find a distinction between in, in that case therapist uh, they you should like you shouldn't diagnose like self diagnose it you should uh, like go to a therapist psychiatrist like someone like with a like who is like, very well informed on this probably specialized in this and you are know, like they would they should do it and like you shouldn't do it by yourself if you if you do have these doubts go to them and that's my advice uh or about others like what are you guys thinking is okay well you have to first start with thinking is this something i'm suffering with or is it not suffering or something i'm experiencing or is some is it something a friend might be experiencing and honestly talking about it now we might be more better equipped to see if if someone else we know might be experiencing it or if we ourselves are and again for the diagnosing it has to be done by a therapist but uh i guess you might notice it with most mental illnesses the people who suffer from, who have it do not want to be having it this is something good for them they don't want the attention they won't usually want solutions they want a way for it to stop so if you ever notice that someone is really suffering or like struggling with their behaviors and they they seem more unhappy or um, at least with this one i think you might be more unhappy because the whole point of uh, the compulsions is that you're trying to get rid of the anxiety right you you've created a pattern by doing this reduces your anxiety so you might feel okay afterwards but uh i don't know i just you just have to notice patterns and see how someone is doing and then uh talk more with them and then see if this is a repeated experience if it happens a lot happens daily how frequently it happens and then afterwards like say is this something you might want to get checked out with a the therapist cuz i think you might have it but i'm not sure um if you feel, feel like you have it maybe you should go talk to someone else so you can get an answer i think that's how you could go about it um i i th- is this likely to be short uh, period is this likely to be extinguished easily in comparison to the normal other three conditions of ocd because like if you think about it in some cases it might be a, an easier thing to solve because it's more about your thoughts and maybe you can control your thoughts in some cases so may I, like or maybe the, if you are just working on on something on something completely different so you might be able to find an escape in that case so yeah that's my question yes yeah so that's an excellent question i didn't think of comparing the frequency or or uh, the uh, the ease of finding this type compared to the others so my my take on this is i feel like it's it's harder on on some level because uh, you know when it comes to human beings so there's three things right so there's what what people do what people say or and what people say they do and what people think so there's actually these four things that are different and what what people think might actually be very different from what they do so the people might be just really good at hiding in terms of acting on these forbidden thoughts so i'm sure all four of us none of us are you know these yogis who attain who attain this sense of uh, you know thoughtlessness right so th- that's something that's very hard to achieve and we do have forbidden thoughts i do have forbidden thoughts and it's 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 just about not acting on them in the sense that you know uh, you try to minimize it and catch yourself and see and analyze what's going on there like why is that happening and what what can i do to you know make myself a better human being so and when it comes to the frequency uh, it's probably a lot less compared to the people who are uh, you know who are experiencing this experiencing this at a much higher rate so for them it's 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 harder because they just can't seem to turn that switch off it's harder for us it's easier for us if if we do catch ourselves we move on and you know life life goes on we're not i mean uh, i can only speak for myself so uh, you know i'm not punching a wall and i haven't gotten into a fist fight with anyone and it's it's harder for some people when they get angry they feel like punching them and they act on it so you know and in in those cases it's easier shit of uh, you know seeing that you know maybe they have something going on beneath the surface but uh, if they simply have these forbidden thoughts and they're not sharing that with anyone you might just mistake that for something else so yeah that's that's my answer to that i think there might be a solution in in like 
to up, do something which is which might interest you and might even put you in a flow stage so mm. you like like the um yeah basically you're escaping from it in a way like not exactly escaping but you're seeing mm. an alternate form of of activity which is exerting your which you're exerting your energy into mm. so rather than yeah. your brain using your energy to to construct these kind of That's thoughts right. in your brain you're spending right. your energy to do stuff which you might find meaning or calling in mm yeah you you're channeling that you know potential and uh, the, that free space the that the thoughts are negative thoughts are occupying into something more meaningful right so you try to find a purpose something that drives you and then you know channel your thoughts towards that it's, it's easier said than done but uh, yeah that's definitely a possible uh, you know a solution okay um now we done for that uh, i don't know it will be my last question for like osi so uh, like if you were a parent which i know like none of you are uh, but uh, if you were a parent then uh, like what are some things where like, like having a kid with ocd like how would that you know like like where are the places where you have to be understanding how would it affect you like what are things that you can do for the kid thoughts i think for the first three times which you mentioned it's rather visible so it might not be that hard to find out that the problem exists for the fourth time there's a problem that is very hard to figure out if it exists or is it a temporary feeling i am i will come up with more about this like so yeah this is a tough one um because shita brings up a really good point if it's it's hard to notice and act on things that you don't see and especially if they're forbidden thoughts then the person's going to try and not talk about having these thoughts to other people because they're going to think that other people are going to think they're a terrible person for having these thoughts so that makes it doubly hard to figure out that something else is going on um i think I don't know actually you can tell me about this but do OCDs get worse over time if you keep fueling the behavior or you uh I think there it, was there was a question on Google which said yes but I didn't like read it uh, I was like like press it so I'm, I'm not entirely sure on this okay cuz I feel like I read a book where one of the characters had OCD um uh, that's where I got like it's actually subjective I guess it's, it depends on like how how the person is dealing with it and what's the case of is for that person so probably is from that it, it depends on like how the person deals with it sure there's no one answer i guess yeah so then like as a parent you might do things to help reduce the you know like, pre- prevent the coping mechanisms that the child is going through from becoming worse in a way uh like behaviors that are less intrusive in their life that don't inhibit their life as much i mean i don't know how much a parent can really control that but therapy send your kid to therapy earn enough money <laughs> no maybe there's a there's a cheaper and a more safer way which is probably to get them involved in activities which are more likely to make interest them so that's that's a rather easier thing to figure out like what is what interests them so like if someone is interested in art art at times is a very good presenter of what the person thinks so like in, in in any form of art even if it's music or it's normal painting or drawing uh it is important uh, to know that you know like you these things would help in like you know like reducing it but you are like entirely you are like taking the thing off is something that's like very very hard and like, you know like so like uh, you also have to like make sure your expectations are not too high and uh, you know just for you're putting the effort uh, you shouldn't uh, like say i'm putting so much effort like why is nothing happening you know you shouldn't put that blame on the kid you know those things are important as well you ask what are your thoughts i mean sure kids follow follow up on uh, you know f- follow on what their parents do and say so actions speak, speak a lot louder than what you say to your kid and uh, you know if, if you if you suddenly come up to you know a kid and try to ask them about what they're thinking or what they're doing in their private time it's it's going to be very hard to get a real answer out of them you know 
yeah it's very very intrusive and the way you break that in my opinion is you is is the parent sharing their forbidden thoughts you know when they were a kid you know when they were going through puberty you know be, being honest with them and building that trust can can really go a long way if you if you really want to find out how the emotional state of of the kid is so you know That's sharing in some cases yeah yeah like but you, it's like it's, a child might end up losing respect for their parents or something in that yeah case. that's that's definitely a risk because trust is a two way process right vulnerability works it's a two way process so when you're building that bridge you're putting yourself out there right and as as a parent you you are taking a leap because you're saying i want to bring someone into this world and raise them right that's that's a commitment and that's a big deal you're in for the long haul till you die so and that's that's a much bigger risk than having this conversation so before you become a parent i'm i'm, I'm i you know everyone should think about these things what if, what if my kid turns out to be someone who has really dark thoughts and because of genetics so the, the parent should be in in on some level be able to handle that and uh, that's definitely the right shitage because it's it's a two way process that kid can it can really backfire on you and he might just talk about that with everyone and you lose all respect credibility in your social circle but you, there should be there are ways to mitigate that you know it's it's not like we humans have lived for 2000 years i'm sure there's been cases like these and there are people who have come out well you know ra- raising kids that that uh, have these thoughts you know they have come out and done brilliant, brilliant things so yeah we yeah we, we can't really we can't really you know put the blame on kids if if they come out and speak against their parents so yeah i i feel like it's on the parents to do whatever they can to to raise the kids so yeah yeah never blame the kid okay uh, i have a few things to add from the, the google searches i have made uh, so you know like uh, some things i could uh, you know like the parents could do like uh, like like you know when you eat food you know like uh, if they have to chew a certain number of times or uh, they can't eat food uh, certain foods or they have to eat certain foods in certain orders or they have to like, tap the spoon tap the fork you know like a certain number of times let them do it you know like, that's not really affecting you uh, and you know like like a big thing that they will like uh, any kid with mental illness would have is that like, the moment they find out they have a mental illness is like shit I have a mental illness does that mean my parents going to leave me because you know like they uh, like you know like why would they want me you know like uh, I, and they would have like and in fear they might have an inferiority complex they don't have to have one but uh, so you know like first of all you know like if that uh, like giving the reassurance you know parents should uh, like be doing that's with any mental illness and this is like very very important with ocd because ocd is something that's like you know like uh, is seen by a lot of people it's like uh, one of the uh, one of the things like you, you could have anxiety you could have depression and this is a form of anxiety disorder uh, but not everybody might know that you have those things whereas this is something that you know like people would visibly see that hey like yeah this person might pro- might have ocd and that's the reason why like a lot of people actually even say that you know like uh, like way freely that hey uh, like she's so ocd about this and he is so ocd about this and things like that uh, next one is like they probably don't want to share it with you e- uh, either because uh, of, like you know we already spoke about these things so um, so if they are secret- uh, secretive about certain things and they are not willing to be vulnerable you know like accept it sort of you know like uh, maybe like trust your kid that you know like uh, they will still like take right decisions help them with it uh, share share your stories as we have said uh, just like you know like if they do share it with you awesome but if they don't like uh, like don't look at it more in a way where uh, you know like this did help and then so i'm not going i'm going to stop doing it Maybe the first uh, first few times you were vulnerable like uh, they didn't see feel okay maybe like the the tenth or the twentieth time they might say something or maybe they just like take it to the grave about this because they uh, because of the amount of stigma that it has in the society like uh, like you know they trust you with a lot of these things but uh, like something saying that something's wrong with me uh, or something or, like it's not even their fault you know like saying it might be hard for them and uh, you know like so if they don't say something like do be understanding um and then you know like uh, the last one was sort of be like you know like they might have like 
tantrums because you don't allow them to like do these things and uh, research has actually shown that you know like you not allowing them to like do certain things by saying hey don't do that. and like, those kind of things like don't help them at all as a matter of fact you know like uh, those are those are sort of things that actually like uh, like without if like uh, let's say a kid doesn't get treat, any treatment and then like you know he's in an environment where he, uh, like he or she is said to like you know like don't do this don't do that which is like uh, usually a very normal thing but then you know like uh, like when it comes to these uh, things with ocd and like they, uh, they don't allow you to do it it actually does get worse so like uh, you might think that you're helping them by giving them like uh, like negative reinforcement by saying hey like this is a, this is a sort of thing you shouldn't do but if you don't allow them this might actually like make them feel worse uh, those are stuff i found on the internet uh, give uh, everyone give your closing thoughts and then uh, we can stop the recording so um i mean my closing thoughts would be something that's been you know reiterated a lot of times by lakya and shitej uh, you know the the fact that you know being kind compassionate is is a solution for a lot of things and uh, you, you don't need to have a psych, you know you know background in psychology or be a licensed therapist to to listen to someone so it's a very hard thing to do but you know it's uh, I was talking with a colleague here in in my office today and uh, you know he was he was mentioning things about uh, we were talking about uh, you know a relative of mine who uh, you know she started uh, in the last 3 months she you know she's been uh, kind of paralyzed from the waist down so she's not able to move and the doctors are not able to find the reason uh, you know they they gave up they said you know we have you know they had eight doctors on the panel and they couldn't figure out what was wrong so she is now you know on a wheelchair at home and you know she was she started sharing a lot of things about her life uh, that that maybe uh, that maybe she, that maybe uh, she she won't you know when she was uh, you know walking or you know having other things to do. she started sharing a lot of things about her life from her past from her childhood her uh, you know uh, things that you wouldn't normally share to a stranger you know so some uh, some really personal things so uh, and uh, you know um, um, so robin was talking about that as well because he said you know when put in those situations people uh, do talk a lot and they go out of their uh, regular set of uh, their behaviors so you know talking a lot and listening helps you know when when someone is trusting you with the story sometimes it's okay to listen and you know uh, yeah because time is is the biggest asset and if you if you're willing to listen to someone it's it's much better than you know sometimes than giving money so yeah i like i would like to reiterate a point that bias brought up earlier about uh like taking a leap of faith of like being vulnerable with someone um whether it's your kid or anyone else that's the way i want to take it you can only really help someone or be open with them they'll only be open with you if that kind of bond that cut that trust that relationship exists so um whoever you care about like make an effort to know what's going on in their life it's we have a lot of friends that we may not connect with every day but if there's someone who matters to you share what's happening in your life learn about what's happening in theirs so in that future if there's ever any support that they might need you would be a person they would reach out to um and make sure that they're a person you would reach out to as well I believe the one word which we can actually use is empathy. That summarizes everything. I probably like we can just say that we one needs to empathize with the with whatever the problem, whatever problems the your um colleague or friend or anyone is have is having. So, like if the only thing which we need to do is at this point is to understand the other person's problem, which is to empathize, and if possible to work with it and. and maybe do not advise them directly to go to therapist because if you is this pretty rude to say that and yeah that's my thoughts okay uh, thank you so much for sharing uh, uh, your thoughts it was like wonderful like having this discussion um, i had uh, i learned a lot through this discussion um, i hope the viewers uh, did too um, uh, so yeah it was like uh, really fun uh, thank you